are about to do. And then I'll, ha I'll have you guys cheer. <laughs> Hello world, greetings and welcome to the Facebook Business Briefing coming to you live from not so sunny San Diego, California. <laughs> we have a wee bit of inclement weather, not like us down here in sunny California. So this is Mari Smith and I'm so happy to be here with you. We are going to be sharing some amazing updates on what is happening with Facebook. I have just finished speaking at several events and there is a lot going on right now with Facebook and the Facebook family of apps is what we're actually going to be talking quite a bit about today. So obviously Facebook and then don't forget Messenger, Instagram and I'm even going to touch on WhatsApp especially for all you folks all around the world who use WhatsApp primarily. Messenger is the top app in the United States but outside the US it's actually WhatsApp. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, here's how it's going to work. I see myself there. I know we're streaming. How's the lighting? Is it not too bad? Yeah, it's a little bit hot. How about if I stand like this? No. <laughs> 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 so I would love for the, my friends watching the live stream, go ahead and pop in the comments, what are some of the things that you are concerned about with Facebook? I want to know what, uh, just two days ago, Adam Masuri, the um, head of newsfeed at Facebook, Actually, I shared on my page last night, it's actually already been shared a number of times, that they did away with the explore feed test. So there's not going to be any two feeds, hallelujah. There's going to be just one feed. And I think the announcement that Mark Zuckerberg made on January 11th uh, basically uh, satisfied their, their um, need for having more content for friends and family in the news feed and less from business pages. We'll talk a little bit about that. So I'd like to know what are some of the things that are troubling you around Facebook going forward? Is it the ads? Is it the reach? Is it not getting a hold of Facebook? Hello, that should be top of your list as the really crappy customer service from Facebook. I hope you're listening, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> well, it's really hard to get a, human, get a hold of a human being and, and get some proper service for a lot of people. I know obviously if you're spending a lot of money on ads, it's actually somewhat easy to get, to get uh, help from from Facebook. But um, anyway, this is us counting down to the actual pre-show. We've got a few minutes to, to chit chat. Um, welcome. Now then, there is some sketchy internet in here. I would recommend if you're trying to get online, maybe use your own uh, cell service because it's probably going to be a little tricky. Hi, Fiona. Hello. Greetings. Oh, hello. This is my whole inner circle table. <laughs> Look at you. Hey, that's awesome. Great. Glad to have you here. So um, if you're able to uh, get online, my friends in the room here, if you're able to tune in if you see it on the stream, that's fine. If not, obviously you're in the group and you can catch after and interact with all the folks. I think we have over 500 in that group right now, which is really great. So, so I'm watching my little countdown bu bug over here. Are you going to tell me when I'm officially going to start my you're actual you're slides? Well, no, I know, I know I'm live. <laughs> I can see that I'm live. <laughs> Wait, what? That whole thing was just a rehearsal. <laughs> no, I know I'm live, but I see my countdown bug there. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, so uh, thank you, of course, yeah. So Luria, in her multifaceted capacity, is going to also be doing some group moderation or a stream, live stream moderation. So um, she's actually going to give some of you lovely folks tuning in a, a, a shout out and uh, any questions that you may have or some of the concerns I'm asking you about, uh, you can go ahead and... Oh, I've got a little buzzy that's thing that's going on. Oh. So, uh, okay. So some, uh, some people who answered your questions about concerns. Yeah. In Facebook, mic on. Which one? Like. <laughs> Hello, busy one. There we go. I know. I used to be a tune. To take her I was a mess jockey for a long time. Yeah. Weddings and parties used to get. <laughs> All right, so here are some that you can read off. Okay, thank you, Luria. So, hello. Oh, now I need my glasses. <laughs> See, we're in the countdown. See, it says six minutes, 40 seconds. Libby says we're hearing screeching. Well, that's not so good. Well, it's maybe just when that mic was on because there's a lag time. Andrea. Andrea Allen says my main concerns on Facebook are rising ad costs and decreased impressions. Ouch. Okay, has anybody else got that concern? Yeah, okay, quite a few yeses. 
Well, it's interesting because there, there's actually, it's a supply and demand, isn't it? With the, the ad, there's, there's less place to put our ads. So it's a big part of what I'm going to be talking about today. It's something that I feel like a lot of marketers and business owners are not necessarily, don't necessarily see the tidal wave that's coming uh, on where you're going to be able to get more uh, placement for your ads and get better ROI for your Facebook ads. So um, I will definitely add, add address that, on Andrea. Uh, Deborah Harris, not getting many views like in groups, views in groups. Okay, Deborah. Okay, I am going to talk about groups today. Uh, Laura Hawkins, sending messages. from my business page but it's sending it's so funny we, we test everything it all works perfectly then we go live thanks for hanging in there my friends uh, Dawn says a concern for easy access for oh, for cyberbullying yeah well that's really that's a big issue for uh, Facebook for sure I know they're always doing their best with that uh, Barbara Facebook better supporting for nonprofits do you have any nonprofits in the room oh a few of you oh wow okay awesome That'd be great. I'd love for you all to, to share a little bit afterwards and uh, maybe connect on the break as well uh, and uh, share in the group. It's always a unique uh, situation with, um, with uh, nonprofits. Christopher, what is that thing that uh, Google has for nonprofits? I'll repeat it if you can. That's an awesome program. They did some pro bono. I'll repeat it for the live. I'll repeat what you're saying for the live. I'm talking to the live people. Ten thousand dollars a month or more. <laughs> Google AdWords credit if you are a accredited nonprofit. Five hundred one three C. Thank you. Whereas with Facebook, they did they do something like that? Facebook did something, but it's much smaller. It's a small grant. Sometimes small grant. Twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Uh, hi, Kim, Kim McAllister. How do we get around the change in algorithms and get seen? Are Facebook ads really effective? Yes and yes. Uh, <laughs> no, get seen. I am going to talk quite a bit about that, Kim. You'll, you'll get some really great value. Fiona Clark says, Christopher, she wishes she was here with you. <laughs> She's one of our inner circle members, too. She's, she should be at the table right here. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Dawn is saying, I have a lot of business owners that get in trouble for sharing too much or adding too much. What are the limits? Uh, somebody's standing in front of <laughs> Oh, Check, check, check. I can tell time I'm suddenly like, where's that head? <laughs> it's a lag time. <laughs> They're coming? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Bella. <laughs> and so, but my mic is going to the live, right? They can hear me. You guys can all hear me in the live? Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, let's just pull the count down and go. So, two minutes and 25 seconds and... Boom, just like that, we're live now. <laughs> well, we were live before, but this is, they call it the pre-show, so you have the countdown timer and just people are joining in and, and interacting. And feel free throughout this stream, of course, to go ahead and share your comments. I know right now I'm streaming live on my page and we're also, uh, we have this inside of the group. If you're not yet a member of the Facebook Business Briefing Group, you're certainly welcome to join. Is it where I'm standing with the little feedback? David? Yeah. She's getting still feedback. How's it coming on the live? How's my audio? Just type in the comments. How's my audio on the live? That's the main thing good. for the audio. Does but sound good. uh huh. Who just said it sounds great live? It's so confusing, right? It's confusing these days because there's live, but wait, but we're live. <laughs> but there's live online, virtual live. There's, we're IRL, right? In, in real life. 
Ah. Okay. All right, so are you okay, Mama Chari? You can get through? This is Mama Chari, everybody. She's everybody's mama. If you're looking to adopt a new one. <laughs> That's great. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, so let's dive in to my presentation. Is that okay? Well, I'm just going to go. Yeah. You guys do what you need to do. Oh, my earrings might bang my mic, so we'll need to keep an eye on that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So this is uh, partly for <laughs> people who have never heard of me and don't know me. Um, I am the premier Facebook marketing. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I'm a little punch drunk. I must admit, this is, like, this is being intense. I have spoken in front of about 10,000 people this week, and it's been intense. I, I was very blessed to do the opening keynote for traffic and conversion on uh, Wednesday and with 6,000 people, and then I just spoke at Social Media Marketing World. Who was at Social Media Marketing World? Yeah, oh my gosh, it's practically the whole room. There you go. Well, every year, and it's so funny, where's Lee? Lee, partly Lee, I think it was mostly Lee. Lee's in my inner circle as well, there's Veronica. And um, each year, this is the sixth year in a row of Social Media Marketing World, and I think I only skipped one year, but I, I host this event post-Social Media Marketing World because people are flying in from all over the world. It's a wonderful way to meet and greet. I love live streaming, and uh, what you can do with Facebook Live is absolutely extraordinary, um, but there's no amount of technology that will ever replace, ever. I don't care how good AI gets. We, the, you can't beat being in person with, with people in their eyes and feeling their energy and connecting and some of my greatest business accomplishments have come as a result of belonging to incredible groups and masterminds and being with people in person so thanks for doing whatever you had to do with your busy schedule and Lee the reason I was calling you out, I do that all the time I start a sentence and then I forget to finish it <laughs> <laughs> rabbit holeitis I call it <laughs> uh, but Lee was, was kept she goes from Wales right you come over from Wales yeah. North Wales, and she kept saying, Mari, are you having your event? And it kept going, I'm booking my flights. Are you having your event? Please have your event. I'm booking my flights. All right, I'm just going to book my flights, and you better be having your event. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Lee. So that's awesome. All right, so uh, I was hired by Facebook a couple years ago, and I was on tour with them, went around the whole of the United States and teaching small business owners like many of yourselves here and entrepreneurs the power of Facebook, how to use Facebook, Facebook ads. They, I don't think they even had Facebook Live. Well, they just started to do Facebook Live a couple years ago. 2015 came out. Uh, speak all over the country and the world, of course, and uh, I'm a brand ambassador for a number of uh, organizations. I love doing brand ambassador work. It's really very, very gratifying to me. I have such high, high standards. I really have to love the product, the culture, the company, what they stand for, their values. It has to be a product or service I use in my own company. And so I've come to really over the years, decade plus, that my, my audience, my group, my community, my peeps just really trust, okay, if Mari's recommending it, it must be good and so so that's uh, I'm going to talk about some of the companies I represent today so uh, with that how are we doing does it sound okay with the audio yeah, yeah we're doing good we're fine okay that's why I was okay those we'll monkeys okay you're the best I know the show must go on right no we definitely ordered two so not to worry on we on we go um, okay great so on that note a wee sip of water I'm from Scotland, by the way, and when I get really tired, my Scottish accent comes out even more. <laughs> so, and that's not really water. <laughs> hey, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Why not, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't. I really. Yeah, yeah it's like it's, yeah, totally after hours in Scotland, right? No, seriously, I actually I don't drink alcohol. By the way, my, my doctor's in the room. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Chari, that's uh, Mama Chari's daughter and her brother Deepak. They're wonderful people. Connect with them on the break. Yeah, she's amazing. She, she, she gets me in tip-top shape. I'm looking a lot better, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway. So, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Products, products and brands. I was finished on that topic. My next slide coming up. 
So I speak all over the world in the country, like I say, and I talk to businesses of all sizes, major corporations. They bring me in to do briefings for Fortune 500s, Fortune 100s. I work with major direct sales companies. I work in the finance industry with banks, insurance companies, and with many, many small business owners and solopreneurs. And it is absolutely mind-boggling how much potential, opportunity that there still is with particularly with Facebook marketing, but I'm going to call the Facebook family of apps like we called with Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and with groups, and with paid placement using video. We talk a lot about that with the watch platform that Facebook's putting big emphasis on. And I'll tell you, Renee, hi, friend. He's nodding away there. Absolutely. It's Renee and Andrew from 22 Social. Yay! Connect with those guys on the break. They're good peeps to know. And uh, right here in San Diego. But the whole concept of live and doing having your own show and being able to do ad breaks. I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got slides for you and all these. I'll pop these slides into the group uh, after, after our, our broadcast today. You're more than welcome to have these slides. The opportunity that I see is that we, we the masses, the folks out there get really caught up in getting mad at Facebook. Ah, reach apocalypse and Facebook zero and and I think there's some things said at Social Media World on one of the panels about hey Facebook's there Facebook's platform and they're free and you know like it or lump it and it's like well wait a minute that's no fair us we the users and we the businesses made Facebook what it is you right so it's a give and take so that right now this even though Facebook's 14 years old I feel like okay, now they're really fine in their groove. They know what they want to be when they grow up. And, 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 and how many of you work in the social media profession, that you're a social media expert? Oh my goodness, almost half the room. I say, yes, okay, about 40% of the room. That's perfect, that's great. People need your help. People need your help out there. They really do. There are literally only 70 million businesses only. That's a fair amount. I've heard from some folks say uh, 100 million uh, businesses on Facebook. And only six million of them are advertisers. So in my professional opinion, that is a big discrepancy. That's 63 million businesses that don't get the power of Facebook advertising. And it's actually the most granular targeting that your ad dollars can ever possibly buy. There is no other platform that can have the type of granular targeting and the remarketing and the engagement audiences and whatnot that we'll get into. And so uh, I've, I've heard both Facebook and Instagram say, literally, that they are only 1% done. It even gives me goosebumps to say that, because you think how far they've come. A 14-year-old company, 2.1 billion active members, users, and that's their only 1% done. But if we look forward into the future of what they're working on, uh, all kinds of things, like in this summer, they're bringing out a video chat device, in-home, an in-home video chat device to compete with the Amazon Echo Show, the Amazon Echo Show, which is a video chat device. So something that's coming is um, voice convert, commerce, voice commerce, being able to order, just can you imagine going up to a device in your house, I mean Amazon already has it, but with Facebook, it's going to be facial recognition, you can go, oh, we're out of toothpaste, okay, order it. <laughs> Obviously with Amazon, right? But with your own family, you can do this video chat. Um, but think about the implications of that from an advertising standpoint as well, to be able to do this facial recognition and voice technology, uh, voice commerce. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself with the future. That's, that's a little ways down the road, but some of this is right here, right now. Is it all good? Doing fine? Yeah, yeah. We're good. okay. So throughout my talk, I'm going to give you some examples from my own community, my own clients, my own students, and we're going to illustrate some of them. Um, and this is specifically for the folks who are watching the live feed because you guys have internet right now. We don't all have internet right here. If you have internet or you're on your phone or your computer, that's great. But what I'd love for you to do, um, and uh, we did this in some of my other talks this week, it's really fun. You all know what a flash mob is, right? A flash mob. So what we're going to do is when I bring people up, we're going to kind of flash mob them with virtual hellos and uh, uh, Mari's singing your praises and uh, you're on the screen now and Mari's talk or whatever you want to say. Mari's talking about you as a great example of how to do Facebook right or something like that. Uh, that would be awesome. You're more than welcome to do that. And um, so the first guy I want you to meet is Andrew. And Andrew, it works for, he's an independent loan officer and he works with Nations Lending. He's one of their, he's actually their top loan officer. And he goes by Epic Mortgage Guys. He even has that in his, uh, this is his personal profile. 
Epic Mortgage Guy. And I brought Andrew uh, into my slides as a great example of, of a person who's an independent professional, but he, he, he works with a large organization, so he has that support. But the buck stops with him. What he does with his social media is his, is his livelihood, right? So he, I use him as a terrific example um, of how to uh, just really be yourself. You know, you, everybody says, oh, just human. You have to humanize it. You have to personalize it. But sometimes people get stuck. Well, what does that actually look like? Can I talk about business on my personal profile? Um, how much personal should I put in my business page? Um, and the thing is, uh, oh, by the way, Nations Lending, like I say, they're one of my clients. And I'm actually in, uh, leading a, a full-on uh, program for them. We meet twice a month on the webinar and then we do individual work with their 40 branches and just really helping their, their um, branch managers and their loan officers to, to embrace the power of social and Andrew is one of our leading, leading um, performers if you will. I think this is a great example of a post where he just says Andrew Katie is feeling accomplished all in a day's work. One closing, four loans, three loans, five new applications and he does hashtags a lot Hashtag, who's your next lender, or who's your lender, he says. Epic mortgage guy is fun. I keep looking down at my spot. <laughs> Stay put. I should be on one of those little lazy Susan things. I could just, <laughs> just, or one of those twister things. Oh, yeah, they're supposed to be good for your abs. I'll just twist. <laughs> um, here's a wee live that Andrew did. I can see that. But you know what? I don't think we're probably going to have audio. Don't worry about it. I've, only a couple of my slides have audio, so... But you can check him out. He's, he's saying that uh, he's talking about the government shutdown and how that affects um, the mortgage industry. And he had just had lunch at a, a great place. He's given a shout out to the, to the diner. Um, just a really likable guy. And, and what I love about what Andrew does is that one of the main things that I teach in social media is how important it is to be strategic, that you always have a strategic intent. So just before, anytime, anytime you go to press the post or the share or the send or the update button, you're thinking, what is my intent? What is my strategic intent with this post? Even and including, of course, when it comes to personal, when you're sharing personal uh, updates because unfortunately there's there's a fortunate side and unfortunate unfortunately we now live in a society where we're all putting whitewashed versions of ourselves on the, online you know and it's scary it's scary to be vulnerable and put but oh, here's what's really happening but the thing is literally from the day i got on facebook may the 4th of 2007 that's a star wars day may the 4th be with you uh 2007 coming on my 11 year anniversary Every single minute, I people think, oh, Mari, you're like 40% oh, personal, 60% business. No, 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 no. I'm 100% business. You know why? Because personal existed long before Facebook. I pick up the phone and call my family. I use email or text or messenger or whatever, but I don't need to put personal, really private personal stuff on Facebook in order to let my friends and family know because I have other ways to reach them. So when I'm posting on my social channels, I'm very strategic of even when it looks like, oh, I'm just sharing this or I'm sharing that, you wanna be able to make it look and feel like you are sharing with the world, but it's, uh, it has a strategic intent behind it. So um, yeah, so how, we're doing good on the stream? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Switching gears here, Andrew's also, by the way, you'll find him on Facebook. He has a business page called Epic Mortgage Guy. He's on Twitter, LinkedIn. You, he doesn't much with YouTube. Uh, Snapchat, he's very active on Snapchat. He does a lot of relationship building, and, and a lot of his work is through referral. He has a huge referral base of like real estate agents, and he's a great example of, of using social for relationship building. He's not always like trying to pitch or sell or sign up now or those kinds of things. It's about building those relationships and really caring deeply about people. Um, now then, this next slide. This is Instagram getting bigger. <laughs> it's Instagram having babies. <laughs> um, this is really important to know because Instagram is Facebook's next Facebook. That was a subject line, and I want to credit properly, it might have been Business Insider, it could have been TechCrunch, about last fall, you can Google it if you're interested, but that was a, a heading, a headline of one of their articles, that Instagram is Facebook's next Facebook. They have 800 million active users, there's going to be an epic celebration when they hit their first billion, um, and I don't think they're that far away, and they keep bringing out new features for businesses. Uh, by show of hands, who here has a business Instagram profile? Business Instagram. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Now, I asked this in my session at Social Media World. All of those of you that have a business <coughs> profile, how many of you first had 
personal and switched. Wow. Okay, that's fascinating. That's really fascinating. That's a lot of you. Um, I did the same myself, exact same. Now, about a year ago, I think I switched and then I didn't like it because I was doing my stories and my stories posted to my page instead of my profile. And I'm like, oh, but they're more personal. I'd rather do them in profile. So I just switched back. But then I'm like, no, 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 no. The writing's on the wall because of a couple of reasons. Now, if you haven't made the switch or if you're not really doing much with Instagram yet, I highly recommend that's one big takeaway from today. You've got to get yourself an Instagram account and ideally a business account. You can keep a personal, you can keep a personal one and just lock it down, make it private if you want. But the business this one is where you're going to be able to uh, schedule. You can finally schedule posts uh, through the Instagram partners. Hootsuite was one of the first. Uh, let's see who else. Agora Pulse does that. Um, Sprout Social. Did Buffer get it yet? I think. Buffer just got it. Iconosquare. Iconosquare. Okay, thank. Mm -hmm. Later. Later. Oh, later. Yeah, later. Graham, were they called? Yeah. Lately. Lately. Lately? Are they called lately? No. Okay. Oh, later. Well. Okay. So, so, and I think you can schedule up to 30 days of the, and it's not like a workaround. It's not a jerry-rig where you have to get a text to push a button to hit upload. It's like proper scheduling. Um, let's take a look at a few stats here. So there's uh, uh, 2.5 million business profiles on Instagram. 2 million advertisers. See, another, you know, big opportunity. Uh, similar to what we saw on Facebook. So 70 million with 6 million advertisers and then 25 and 2. I, th I find this stat here interesting that 60% of people say they discover new products on Instagram. New products. How many of you have impulse purchased something on Instagram? Oh my God, look at all. And any, any men? It's all women, right? <laughs> I was talking about this in my session yesterday, right, Lee? When, uh, when uh, I, I impulse bought these magnetic false eyelashes. <laughs> yeah. Those things are useless. <laughs> yeah, those. I thought, huh? They're hard to get off. <laughs> Somebody tweeted after my session yesterday a really funny gif, and they said, uh, "My big takeaway from Mari's session is don't don't buy magnetic pulse eyelashes." <laughs> That's what she learned. That was one of her. She's being funny. But anyway, yeah, it's like $20 for one set or 35 for two. I'm like, give me two. You have two sets. I'm like, oh, they're just... Anyway, I didn't bother sending them back. They, they, you know, they came from Asia. They, they traveled a long way. Anyway, <laughs> but the point I'm making about all this is if you are B2C, business to consumer, and you sell products especially, then Instagram is going to be a very, very growing market for being able to make purchases um, and, and, and especially uh, the more impulse buys, what you do into my gear. No. <laughs> uh, where's Veronica? Where's Veronica? Veronica in the back. Raise your hand again. She is a, she's in my inner circle as well. She is an e-commerce expert. She's an e-commerce expert. You deal with a lot of folks that sell things, right? So Shopify, Amazon, eBay, Facebook shop, and then Instagram. Hmm? Pinterest, thank you, Pinterest, like viable pins, yeah, 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 very good. So um, if you are in the e-commerce or you want to connect with someone that knows about e-commerce and check to Veronica on the break, and if there's anybody else in the room, let us know. Uh, but my point is that we've got to be thinking strategically as marketers, as businesses, as advertisers, how can we get our audience to make those quicker uh, impulse decisions. Now, it may or may not be for a purchase. It could be for leads. It could be that you're giving away something of real value and they see it and they go, oh, I just have to have that. There is such a plethora of information on the internet now that it's actually more and more difficult to get people to opt in, to get their email address. It's, it's important to still do that. Email marketing is still a very big component of your social media strategy, your Facebook strategy, uh, for, for a lot of reasons to augment what you're doing with social and Facebook but also because of you can use the custom audiences with Facebook and Instagram. You can actually upload your email list um, and then tell Facebook to find you an audience. Hmm. Let me rephrase that. Facebook will mesh or uh, uh, match your, if you've never done this before, so you upload your list of emails, they've subscribed to you, and you say to Facebook, match these, and you'll get 40, 50, 60% match and then you can target them with ads. You can reach people who've subscribed to you. Now then, people will say to me all the time, but Mari, they're already on my list. Why would I bother paying money to advertise to them? And then I like to say, well, 
I get a 100% email open rate. <laughs> Said nobody ever. <laughs> nobody gets it. Like, you're lucky if you get 17% open rate on emails. So you're touching them multiple ways. And specifically, think about this. If you've made a list of your top paying customers that are um, in our email list, and then you can upload those to Facebook, and then you, it's a magic secret sauce that many, many of our clients and businesses out there have grown their business to multi, multi millions of dollars using lookalike audiences. Lookalike, right? And so you load up your list of top customers, and you say, hey, Facebook, find me people like this. That's why it means look alike. They don't actually physically look alike. They're just, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So anyway, let me um, keep pressing on with some of these points. This is what Facebook is focused on. This is a really important slide here. Unfortunately, it's a little cryptic. You have to work it out yourself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, as you can see it from where you are, it's just a bunch of icons. But actually, no, this is really what they're about. So, yeah. You can see that. Uh, right, 100 billion, 200 billion, 300 billion, right? Um, this is a really important slide because this is going to really summarize a lot of what we're talking about here today. Um, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, Hulu, look out! Facebook's coming for your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is really determined to be a leader in the digital streaming television arena with exclusive streaming rights for certain, like sports, you've probably seen that. I've got a slide coming up to talk about. And also the big war, if you will, there's a big war on right now for original content. So Netflix and Amazon are really leading the way there, but Facebook's really on the map with that. Um, it's just a co competition right for eyeballs. M, Messenger, conversational commerce. How many of you have an automated bot on Messenger bot on your page? A few of you, okay. If you have no idea what that is, I won't ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> messenger bots are the thing. They really are. They're the thing. Um, and there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. I'm getting way ahead of myself because I've got some really important points to make about this a little bit later in my talk here today. But um, keep that on your radar about conversational commerce, about how important it is to be integrating Messenger and with the automated bots, and I'll circle back to that a little bit later in my talk. Groups, 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 meaningful social interaction. We heard Mark Zuckerberg say that right out loud on January 11th. They're favoring content that sparks meaningful social intera interaction. They no longer want for people. They've done all these sur surveys and studies and focus groups where people, if they are like this, scrolling through their newsfeed and they're maybe occasionally liking or occasionally not doing anything, passively consuming content, it doesn't uplift them. It doesn't impact their well-being as much as, as being in a community with people that they know, like, and trust, and their peers, and they can share and get more uh, in-depth feedback. Um, they've actually literally done studies to show that that improves well-being. And right now, Facebook's really on a mission to make sure everybody feels good. Everybody has this sense of strong, positive well-being when they interact with Facebook, anytime they go on Facebook. And because they certainly had some negative press in the last two years, right? They've had a lot of issues um, and, and they've had to put out a lot of fires. And so that's partly, if we can understand as marketers and advertisers, this is part of what Facebook is doing in demoting, if you will, or not favoring posts from pages and businesses as much as they are posts from friends and family. Instagram, I put there, hello Instagram, as I mentioned, a family of apps, and then yo, what's up, what's up, <laughs> they like to say. So what's up, and again, I have a slide for this one as well. Um, I, I'm not too deeply into WhatsApp right now, but I know there are business implications, and I know that there is a relatively new call to action button that you can put on your business page when you're on your Facebook, you're on Facebook, and you go to boost a post, it will pop up a wee blue bubble and it will say, um, did you know you can add WhatsApp? You can add a call to WhatsApp. So what that means is people, especially outside the US, they see your ad in the Facebook news feed or somewhere out in the audience network, they see your ad, and the little call to action, they tap it and boom, they're, they're gonna WhatsApp you, they're gonna message you. And WhatsApp uh, is, is um, aside from their, WhatsApp and Messenger, the two biggest messaging apps on the platform. Outside of China, 
China's WeChat, China's WeChat is beyond a messaging app. Um, if you get a chance, if anybody's interested, you can Google um, New York Times WhatsApp video. New York Times WhatsApp video. They put out this amazing video uh, about a year ago now, and it's just showing all of everything you can do inside of WhatsApp. Uh, excuse me, WeChat. I meant WeChat, my apologies. Uh, New York Times WeChat video. WeChat is China's messaging app. And Facebook has WeChat envy. <laughs> they do because it's like you do so much inside of the WeChat app, right? So anyway, moving to the next point. I want to make sure that you're all watching video. Who here actually, I would say, uh, um, once a week or more watches a show on the Facebook Watch platform? Facebook Watch. Okay, all you early adopters. <laughs> Not too many, um, about half a dozen. But I guarantee within a year, I'm going to give it probably roughly a full year that many, many more of you will have your hands up. Facebook Watch is only available in the U.S. and it is available on mobile, on desktop, and on television. And it's basically like Netflix or, or, or um, Amazon Prime. It's being able to watch streaming videos, especially binge watch. Facebook loves it when we binge watch. I found myself the other day watching a whole bunch of uh, TED Talks in a row. And uh, just, they're short, just little short clips, six minute ones, eight minute, 10 minutes, and it's, you're learning. It's this wonderful way, and you're in Facebook anyway, and it's real easy. Facebook loves that. They want us to do that. So the Watch platform came out late last summer, and uh, there's lots of really great things that you can be doing with it. We'll talk about that in a moment here. What Facebook is going after, if you will, this is a little screenshot of it right here of what it looks like on mobile. Every time I go uh, take a look at it, there's new things in there. There's, you know, what friends are watching, what's making people laugh, what's trending right now, what's making people cry, <laughs> what's making people not do their work and watch Facebook instead. <laughs> they should totally put that in there. Uh, but seriously, this is Facebook's television. Now then, I'm going to have to put my glasses on and read these numbers. They're in my wee notes here. Oh, my volume suddenly went up. Oh, that's because I pressed the B button. Okay, so um, you, you, this is this television ad revenues. This is where there's a big slice of the TV ad pie, if you will, the TV advertising pie that Facebook wants to tap into. It's right now about $72 billion. It's going to go up to $75 billion by 2021. That's in the U.S. alone. And then in the world globally it's right now about 180 185 and it's going to go up to 210 billion dollars by 2020 so there's an increase 210 billion dollars that's a big slice of television advertising there's a, a, a steady increase but what's going to happen with major brands and businesses over the next year and beyond they're going to take more and more portions of their tv ad budgets and they are going to put it to digital streaming television <laughs> And Facebook, this is where it's really interesting to watch with Facebook becoming more of a video platform built on top of a social network as opposed to YouTube was a video platform and they really don't have much in the way of social. But sometimes people like that. Gen Z, Generation Z is uh, everybody in the planet 18 and under. Some people say 20 and under. I think it's 18 and under. Their favorite platform, bless you, favorite platform, favorite uh, app is YouTube. There's no parents watching them. <laughs> they can just, you know, watch content. They can consume their content uh, uh, that way. So um, this is what Facebook's really, their biggest competitor is uh, YouTube in the, in the region of, of uh, video for sure. Five factors that have, have impacted this big surge in video is this is a survey from Facebook. They identified five factors related to the rise of online video viewing. Smartphones, of course, I think there's actually more, is there more, I know there's no smartphones, there's more mobile phones on the planet than toothbrushes, so. <laughs> I know. There's an app, though, but there's an app to brush your teeth. <laughs> uh, um, shorter attention spans, I think it's down to like a cricket or a gnat or something. <laughs> Goldfish. So shorter attention spans, just being able to consume short video content. Binge watching, I said it earlier, it's really easy to just like, before you know it, and Facebook's really gotten that down, right? They've really, it's sometimes annoying. You, it just kicks into the next video and you don't want it to. It does that whether you want it to or not. And sometimes it's completely unrelated, but uh, they're still working on those algorithms. The importance of context, so it means if you're watching something that's actually, uh, friends are watching, like I showed you that other screenshot, things that are making people laugh, things that are making people, um, you know, uh, engage. 
Uh, and then the thrill of novelty. And so that's just discovering things, you know, discovering new, new things to watch. Um, this one's a great stat too, because there's a recent eye tracking study, this Facebook did this as well. People will gaze five times longer at video content than static on both Facebook and Instagram. It's the movement that catches the eye. Our brains process images in 13 milliseconds. And then you add to that, that autoplay video, you know, uh, that makes a big difference. Uh, and this fun little video is made in Wave, wave.video. Uh, they are one of the companies I work with and brand ambassador for. You all uh, know about Wave. Who, who here uses Wave? Quite a few of you. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, yeah wave.video. You can check them out, wave.video. Um, and they have millions of uh, royalty-free images. Like, I, I forget even what I typed in to find that really fun. And I just put it on a, lo a loop. Um, so you get all this great, great video content. So if you're not comfortable being on camera, for example, let's say you're like, oh my gosh, that whole live thing, it really freaks me out. But there's a way you could do about 80% of your video content using a great app or a tool like Wave. Uh, and there's many other ones. Uh, I'm actually ambassador for Animoto. Uh, and there's a few others out there as well that do a great job with video. Uh, Adobe Spark is good too. Adobe Spark is actually free. And they, have, uh, they do have some royalty-free assets in there that they uh, pull from as well. Uh, this, these guys, Wave Video has a lot more. I have a slide coming up for those as well. All right, let's talk in these next few slides. I want to show you this, expand on this we started earlier about the, um, where, where this whole digital television is going. The SVOD is subscription video on demand, and the three big ones are Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu. And they increased their investment in content in the last four years from 5.5 to 13 billion. Now, they're not all revealing what their budgets are for 2018, but Netflix did. And Netflix are spending 8 billion this year with the aim to make half its entire catalog original series. Whoa. Right? And you say, why? Because that's, that's dedicated eyeballs. That means they can only get the show on Netflix. So that is where Facebook wants to play in that field. Amazon is, is definitely, actually Amazon has more. In this next slide, I'll show you. So that, that slide there was increase in the investment. So they're all pumping more money into original content. This, this second one is the numbers of shows. And this goes from 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So uh, Amazon is the top. Amazon has been pumping out way more original content. That's the top blue there. And then Netflix is actually playing catch up uh, to, to, you know, because Amazon just paddled to the metal at Jeff Bezos, right? He's like, let's put a lot more original content. Um, then, but then watch this where I've got my wee Apple and Facebook logo there that uh, they are firmly on the map now, really um, and setting the trend with these original shows. And then YouTube Red is increasing. That's the wee purple one down there. So, um, and this, I have the um, attribution as Parrot Analytics. I want you to make a note of that, especially those of you in the social media industry. Parrot Analytics. Um, I tweeted out the link earlier this week, but if you Google uh, Parrot Anal Analytics um, digital study, something like that, they have like a, six, I got these stats from a 69 page downloadable PDF, just pop your information in there, and it's fascinating. It's the, they really are a, a great company putting out all these stats. Um, in this one other slide in this set, there's also been an increase in exclusive streaming rights. I mentioned that earlier. Again, similar to original shows, you have exclusive streaming rights. The cool thing about that when it's streaming live is that is dedicated eyeballs, right? So like the Super Bowl. Now, there's no online platform that has uh, uh, the streams for dedicated live streams just for a big event like that, but I think it might come. There's 100 million people tuned into the, into the Super Bowl. And that's a lot of advertising dollars, potentially. So with Facebook, I don't know if you know this, but they got the Golden Globes red carpet pre-party. It's a two-hour pre-party. Not the Globes themselves, but the Golden Globes pre-party. There's Sharon Stone, and sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes the comments are just as entertaining as the content. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, but Twitter got it last year. See, Twitter got this exclusive two-hour pre-party, red carpet, and then Facebook got it this year, and so it'll be interesting, uh, you know, what happens next year. And then, this one here, one second. How are we doing on the stream? Fantastic. We're doing good? Every time I look, it looks dark on me. Yeah, Do we need this light closer to me? there's not much we can do because it's going to get in the... <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm backlit, I know. Yeah, it's a hard venue. Oops, and I got my earrings banging my mic. Yeah. It's going to get in the main there's a, But they can all hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, they can see my earrings sparkling. <laughs> they know I'm here. <laughs> all right, no, but seriously, this next fact blew me away. I don't know if you all know this, but in terms of exclusive streaming rights, the India Premier Cricket League. Did you know? Did you guys know that? That it's actually the most beloved cricket league, yeah, on the planet. And uh, cricket's beloved in, in, in uh, England. Australia, too? Is that a powerful game in Australia? Oh, competitive cricket. Cricket? Yeah. Competitors, yeah. Yeah, they're your competitors. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, they, so Facebook last year put in a bid of $600 million for the exclusive streaming rights for the India Premier League. And they lost to Rupert Murdoch's star at $2.6 billion. So I put this slide up because I want you to see the, the writing on the wall and where that hockey puck is going, if you will, like where these major companies are, are, are see where they see where the marketing dollars are. So we need to be savvy as business owners and advertisers and marketers to make sure that we understand why this is all important. Um, is because there's this unprecedented opportunity right now. I truly believe that Facebook right now is roughly where YouTube was eight years ago, maybe even as much as 10 years ago. Right? Google bought them in 2006. They were only a year old, a year and a half old. And Google bought them for $1.65 billion. And at that time, they were, literally, they were a startup, YouTube, a year and a half old, uh, one of the fastest growing sites. They had uh, 100 million video views a day. And now today it's 5 billion. That's on YouTube with a billion of them on mobile, by the way, a billion video views on mobile. So those are important stats for us to know in terms of YouTube, because as I said earlier, YouTube is actually Facebook's biggest competitor when it comes certainly to video, not as it, when it comes to a social network. But this is important for us to know that there's this opportunity right now as marketers, as business owners, as advertisers, as people wanting to reach our target audience, there's extremely powerful ways to do that. And with, with uh, video ads is, is one of the most, thinking of it as television ads, is the most uh, inexpensive way to do that. I really think there's a, a gold mine, I like a gold mine right now. Video ad breaks are cheap television ads. You could not, I bet there's probably nobody in this room that could afford, if you will, a, a, a um, Super Bowl ad. I know I couldn't, I wouldn't want to, right? You have to be in the big leagues to have a Super Bowl ad. But this is the equivalent. You could get a penny of view, a penny of view. You could get a tenth of a penny of a view if you really know what you're doing with your video views. And the view, of course, is only three seconds, but then you wanted, the aim is to get into that more to 10 seconds. Uh, ad break, by the way, is five to 15 seconds. I want you to be thinking as businesses, as marketers, how you can convey your message in literally five to 15 seconds as a video commercial to be able to insert it uh, in stream means that when they're, when you imagine one of those, those exclusive streaming rights with hundreds of millions of people or tens of millions or even just millions of people watching a show or an original show, and then your ad pops up, obviously within the target parameters that you've purchased, and they're also bringing out pre-roll. And, and so that means that Mark Zuckerberg said for years he would never do pre-roll, but now, you know, has anybody else said that when you go on YouTube and you're just counting down five, four, three, yeah. two, one, skip? Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, but it's like the better the ad is targeted, the better it's going to perform. And that's actually one of the biggest mistakes that, uh, that uh, marketers use is, is uh, marketers make, excuse me, is not targeting properly. So, um, yeah, and, and, yeah, good, just one more point. I had my notes in there. But for most people in this room and watching the stream here, this is actually your best uh, customer acquisition strategy. Because the video, the video arena, the video ads and video production and the lives and having a show on watch, it's not anywhere near like saturated. It's still just coming on the curve. It's just in growth mode right now. So really looking to see how you can be doing more video. Um, this is what I want you to think though, to think more like a screenwriter like George Lucas, creator of the Star Wars Empire, and so not a Star Wars person, don't ask me any trivia about it. This was actually Christopher had to tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this. So think more like a screenwriter and not a buy my stuff copywriter, like this guy, no. <laughs> Danny DeVito, <laughs> car salesman. So it's seriously, because I think that all of us as businesses and marketers, we think, oh, we've got to write sales copy, we've got to convert people. And that's important. Of course it's important, and especially for our ads. 
But if you're thinking about taking people on a journey and you're actually uh, weaving your story and weaving the customer story, a great book, by the way, or you can get it on audio, is uh, called Story Brand. Uh, and it's by a gentleman called Donald Miller. I'm always raving about him. We studied it in my FAST Facebook program. Um, and it's just called Story, story Brand. I think it's Story Brand, Donald Miller. He also has a podcast and he has an audio version of that book. I really enjoy his concepts about this, this story aspect of it. So to get your show on watch, even if you think, Mari, I'm not ready, I'm nowhere near ready to have a show, I don't know if I'm going to have a show, I highly recommend that you go ahead, and I'm going to give you a link in a moment of where you can go ahead and, um, and uh, apply and tell Facebook that you're interested in having a show. So uh, first of all, they're definitely favoring the creator app. It's interesting, and I polled uh, the audiences this week, not too many people are using the, bless you, the creator app at all. Does anybody here use the creator app? Okay, about six people. Um, and it's confusing, quite frankly. It's, it's mobile only, and it was called Mentions, and then they rebranded it and brought it out, and it's called the Creator app. The really cool thing about the Creator app is that you can put broadcasting live, it's for broadcasting live, or you can just post on your Facebook page, uh, that you can do the pre-roll, and, and you can do like an intro and an outro, an intro and an outro. Uh, and, and what that means is you could actually have, have more kind of um, polished, not polished necessarily, it actually even looks a bit more informal, but people are starting to get more used to seeing the portrait videos. Does anybody know if you can broadcast landscape using Creator? Yes. You can, right? Okay, thanks, Luria. I've only done a uh, portrait. So you can broadcast landscape or portrait. Thank you, Luria. But um, it's interesting. I think it's early days yet, and Facebook often puts things out there, and then they see how they perform, and, you know, and then we'll see where they, where they go with the Creator app. But I, I've seen that they're favoring Creators, whether you use a Creator app or not. Uh, and live producer is coming probably more for the high-end blue check verified, you know, uh, major brands at first. What does, do you know a little bit, David, about producer, live producer? Not much, no. I mean, do you? They, they're testing. But they're they're testing, testing like crazy right now. There's nothing like officially out there, but I've seen little screenshots and it's like a whole console and being able to bring in multiple cameras and do B-roll and lower thirds and, and basically, um, yeah, produce your own show. Right? right. right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, that's, well, if they're wanting to compete with Netflix and Amazon, they're gonna, yeah, they have to help us people to be able to produce content better. Um, episodic content is really, really important. So um, how many of you right now have a show where you go, you have a show, yeah? So every week, same time, same day? Oh, cool, oh, awesome, that's great, that's yeah, great, yeah, yeah. And Luria, she's a, one of the masters here on shows, you can talk to her in the break too. And so I'm launching three shows. I'll tell people, I've been telling people for like two years, you gotta have a show. I'm like, Mari, where's yours? <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> it's on my to-do list. No, I've got three shows launching. It was really exciting. So here's the, here's the list. You can apply that. This, you can just Google it, but take that. So it's FB Watch Forum, Bitly, FB Watch Forum, and that will get you uh, Facebook's application form to uh, uh, tell them that you are interested in having a, having a show. You don't have it in Australia. That's a good point that Lisa just made. It's not in Australia. This is probably going to be U.S. only. You might not. If you go to that link and it shows that page not found, 404, broken link, it's probably not going to show up for uh, if you're outside the U.S. Yes, Renee? Uh, we applied like three or four months ago. Yeah. Any clue as to what they need to see on your page? Okay. Renee has a great question here, and he said they applied about three or four months ago on the same form, and uh, any clue on what parameters Facebook needs in order to say, green light, off you go, you got your show. Now, um, it's interesting, because I've seen a few folks in there, and I, I've had that same thought, like, how did they get their show? <laughs> but uh, for some of it, I'm not sure, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but um, I do know that some of the parameters are for sure they're going to look at your page, and they're going to look at your number of fans. They're going to look at your engagement. They're going to look at um, your engagement while you're live, if you're doing live. If you're uploading video, what's engagement there? Possibly, are you spending any ad budget? Um, and they're certainly, at the top of the list, certainly going to look at, do you have episodic content? So is it hmm? short? It can be short. It can be short. I've seen some longer. And I would, I'm sure you've studied the watch platform and seen a variety of different lengths. Three to five minutes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if you're good, actually they made a change to the algorithm, remember, that was favoring videos that people consistently come back to watch and or type in to, to search for them. 
That's, that was an algorithm change like last fall. Can you drive traffic to the query? You can what? Drive traffic to the URL that's the query. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go, to the query, yeah, exactly. Do you think the level of production of the video matters? Bella, right? Yeah. Uh, um, um, the level, the question was, does, do I think the level of production matters? Um, again, I'm going to recommend, like, especially, obviously, for folks in the U.S., look at what they have on there, and what I'm seeing is almost all well-produced. Some of it's, like, complete off-the-map reality show type stuff. Is it warm in here, or is it just me? It's a little warm. A little warm. Does somebody know where the thing is? I think it's behind you. Well, I think it's. I think it's. The, it's behind there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe pop it down a couple of degrees if it'll go. Thank you so much. It's a little toasty with all us folks in here. Um, uh, production. Yeah, Bella. I. I think that. And it's interesting because, because it doesn't have to be. And I think that we get stuck uh, as, as show uh, content creators as we we think. It has to be super like television quality, and that would be great if you can do that. But don't let that stop you, because there's there's great inexpensive ways. So obviously, and I know you you have a podcast and you do some shows, um, but that can that could be a factor as well. Uh, like it probably we'd have more uh, possibly more chance of of them um, you know uh, contacting you, you know for a show. And but yeah, we'll see. The more I can find out, the more I'll share with you. So thanks, great questions. All right, are we doing okay? All right, so we've got a few more to go here, and then, uh, and then uh, are we going to take questions from the thing? Are we okay? Oh, you've got some. Oh, great. Thank you so much. So another person I wanted to meet is Lara. Lara is an animal trainer, an animal behavior. So she just went through the fast Facebook results training program. And someone like Lara, and that, this is really, actually this is a great segue from your question, Bella, because she, she's very informal. She's done 82 shows. Live stream and she puts right there Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern. This is her playlist on her Facebook business page, and it's called Coffee with the Critters. <laughs> Coffee with the Critters, you know. And she gets a variety of views: 10,000 views, 4,300, 7,800, 6,400. And uh, she's just really fun. And she just literally she talks. To, she basically sits down and chats to the animals. No, <laughs> she she talks to. She brings in other guest experts, and uh, she's a real obviously you know real animal person, real expert. She's fun, and people just love animals. So she, she is a prime candidate to be having a show on watch because it's unique, it's different, she has a good following, she has people want to tune in to see what animals she's going to be with next, that kind of thing. So, you know, so, so, so she's a great example. She's doing real good things with her live. She goes live a lot as well. That's, a, that's another uh, component of it. Now then, our good friends at Buffer actually did a study and said that 43, they discovered that 43% of marketers said they'd create more video content if there were no obstacles like time and resources and budget. Ooh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> yeah, so of course, again, to create, in order to create video, good video content, we are like, well, it takes time, it takes resources, I gotta have uh, assets, I gotta have you know, camera, gear, lights, I know what I'm gonna say, uh, hire someone to do it, so on and so forth. Um, and it can, it can definitely take time but like i said earlier there's ways that you can make about 80 percent of your video content uh using some of these platforms like wave or animoto and i'm going to show you how my winners they call my winners are winning and it starts with having the right strategy right luria luria is a fellow strategist you got to start with the strategy because what, otherwise what happens is people go one and done or they just do some kind of random video and they hit the boost button and then they oh well that didn't work and they off they go and try something else Purposeful. Purposeful content, purposeful as part of a more um, overarching campaign, bringing in your email strategy, your messenger bot strategy, uh, having a landing page, doing some lead generation. So the right strategy right out of the gate is really important. And we can get you help with that. If you're like, well, I don't know, I'm stuck. Um, you know, I, we have our inner circle. How many of you are in the inner circle? <laughs> oh my gosh, all my yeah. inner circle beats. That's awesome. Coolio, wow, that's awesome. And we're going to have a few of them share uh, a, a little bit later. And then I also have my FAST Facebook program, FAST Facebook results, and FAST is an acronym for Facebook Ad Strategy Training. Facebook Ad Strategy Training. So that's what we cover a lot in my 12-week FAST program. How many of you are in FAST? I know there are quite a few. Yeah, of course. Well, I'm a lot of my inner circle. Lori, I saw you there. That's great. Where do you live again? Cleveland, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were you here for Social Media World? I was. How cool that you stayed. Oh, it's so good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 
So strategy and the, so the, I actually led the 12 week course live and I like to lead live. So what I'm going to do and at the end, I want to share with you that I'm bringing out my next version. So fast Facebook results program 2.0 with another 12 weeks of coaching. So I love to be live with my peeps. So I'm going to share with you how you can get involved with that. The right tools, really important. Uh, to have the right tools that are simple and easy and inexpensive and that you love. I love using Wave. So I'm like, oh, cool, I get to make a video. My team uses it. love using Animoto, all these different tools. Templates, if you can have templates, it, slows, it, it, it stops you from slowing down, that you can actually just be, be more productive. You and or your team can be more t productive. The right content, Luria just said it, but purposeful, the right purposeful content. <laughs> Certainly the right targeting, where a lot of advertisers fall down, if you will, as I said, is, is not targeting the right people. And then last but not least is definitely the right engagement. And so we teach these different strategies in my fast Facebook results program. And it's a combination of Facebook Live, video, amplifying the reach with ads, targeting the uh, custom audiences, lookalikes, and so on and so forth. So um, very, very powerful uh, process that if you have this and you realize, okay, there's a bit more to this than just, you know, popping out a video. Let's l look at another example. Actually, uh, Adriana, she's a romance author in, uh, she's another person that just went through my fast <laughs> Facebook training. And uh, this lovely video, there's no sound on this, but just, she just brought to life the essence of one of her romance novels and tripled her sales as a result of implementing these teachings that I'm talking to you about with the right strategy and putting the video out there and amplifying the reach a little. And uh, was able to triple her sales of this one of her, one of her titles. So, and she's, she's amazing. She's great. She's a seven-figure romance novelist. This is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, so the tool I was mentioning, wave.video, they actually, I don't know if the user, those of you that use it, they just brought out literally in time for social media world, uh, a new interface and they're doing all of these different formats. Uh, so you've got types for Facebook, for Instagram, for Twitter, uh, and on it goes. Um, different uh, formats, so like the cover video, the cover video on your Facebook page, uh, stories. How many of you are, well, let me ask you this, so because um, there's several different things here we can ask. How many of you are regularly using Instagram stories? Okay, quite a few of you, see me about 20 or so. How about Facebook stories? Okay, a little less, yeah, because they're a little more popular. How many of you have no idea what story is? <laughs> and, and would not prefer to raise your hand, that's okay. No, that, so uh, you probably do know what stories are, but you just don't realize that you know. So when you go onto Facebook or Instagram, especially on mobile, it's the little circles at the top. Those are, those are like little short, uh, either an image or a little 15 second video. And they're like little updates. It was a feature directly copied from Snapchat. It's ephemeral comment, uh, content, meaning that it disappears. It disappears after 24 hours. And you're like, what the heck, Mari? What's the point in putting effort into creating content when it's just gonna disappear in 24 hours, right? <laughs> but, um, but it seems to be working and uh, there's millions of users. I forget the numbers, it's 300 million, I think, uh, active users every day on stories, Instagram stories. Around that, yeah, yeah. So all of those folks obviously are using stories. How many of you are doing ads in stories? No, sorry, Alita. Oh, yeah, and you as well, great. Ads, this is going to be a new, this is a growing. Is that Andrew at the back? Hi, Andrew. And Andrew's a, a Facebook ads expert. He, he led a session for us, uh, Andrew Hubbard, right? Uh, led a session for us for Inner Circle. Are, are you experiencing much with the stories ads? Are people coming to you for stories ads? Yeah, they're finding they're working really well. You're finding they're working really well? Because they don't really feel like ads. Yeah, yeah that's neat. Because they're short and, and they're just in context. People are just flipping through, looking at all their friends' short, short content. Exactly. It's so easy to binge watch. Before you know it, you've binge watched and there's an ad in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So stories, ads. I want you to now. The reason I'm telling, talking to you about this in this context is that uh, Wave.video has a format for stories, and you can create your stories ads super easy in here. And uh, stories are full screen, they're portrait, and they're just, it's like micro content. And people, people seem to really enjoy it, just sharing about their day and doing lots of selfies, right, Nancy? What's that? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I know, I don't want to interrupt my, my uh, slides here because it might lose this thing here, but, but I, I, I can maybe go and afterwards and show them or people can maybe see them on my wall. But I, I, so Instagram just recently brought out a new feed and you can add stickers, you can add hashtags and stickers and I, I, I'm very artistic and I love doing things like that. And uh, on Instagram stories, a fairly new feature they added was animated GIFs. 
And so like the other day we had hailstones up in my house and I took this little video of hailstones and then I put a wee picture of like these dancing wellies, these Wellington boots and then the wee umbrella that's moving or, or you can add the animated GIFs to a static photo and turn it into a video. And then you could use that video on Facebook. So even though it's quote disappearing content, you can still save it, save it to your camera roll post it later, use it as an ad if you want, even if it's, if it's relevant. And by the way, circling back to the Instagram business account, Instagram business account allows you to have what's called swipe up so that you can add a link in. Otherwise, stories are not clickable with the links. So if you swipe up, you have to have 10,000 followers. Thank you. Yeah, 10,000 followers. If you drop below 10,000, I think I heard that it goes away. If you, if you drop below 10,000, it will go away. Wow. I know, they are, they're mean, they're darn mean. I know I keep trying to ad advertise on uh, Instagram, but I just put a post out about like this Facebook business briefing or talk about Facebook this or Facebook that, and they won't approve my ads on Instagram because I'm mentioning the word Facebook. Uh, it's just, it's, but not like they're, I mean, it's owned by the same company, but it's just that their, their rules are tighter, I think, right now, that the parameters are that. It's all done by machines, anyway. It's not like a human being's in there, but they're just like, oh, it has FB or Facebook, we're not gonna approve it. Oh. That's amazing. I'm just going to repeat for the stream. So Lisa was saying that the uh, Instagram ads also pick up on the image. She had a Facebook kind of rotating logo yeah, or something, rotating. and her ad didn't get approved. So very interesting to know. Yeah, yeah. Let's meet a couple other folks here. This is Lori, the produce moms, and she was just at the traffic conversion, and she's on a one woman mission, no, there's more, more in her team, but she's on an absolute mission to have uh, adults and children eat more fruits and vegetables. And uh, I just love this little post. I have to go back here and read it. She said, your intelligence has helped me build the produce moms and supported my strategic goals for our growth. Your guidance has helped us beyond words. And so it's just really lovely to meet her. I put this slide in my uh, traffic and conversion presentation on Wednesday morning. She didn't know, it was 6,000 people. And I said, is Laurie here? And she just went, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. She came backstage. I have to meet you. Got selfie. She's just adorable. So it's just really sweet. I love to shine the spotlight on others and. She's doing a great job, so check out if you also, um, uh, she has all kinds of great initiatives in schools to help schools, uh, you know, and uh, children to consume more fruits and vegetables, so really sweet lady. Uh, and another, uh, talking about food, Whitney, so I'm actually doing a training for uh, Ad Thrive. Ad Thrive is a big ad network, and they're owned by Cafe Media, Cafe Mom, that's all part of that, uh, that uh, big family of giant companies. And uh, in a couple weeks' time, uh, when do I go to Austin? Yeah, two weeks' time, I will be in Austin, Texas, and I will be sharing the stage with Randy Zuckerberg, that's Mark Zuckerberg's sister. And uh, she used to work for Facebook, but then she went off, she has her own agency, and she's a Broadway star. She, she sings on Broadway, that was always her dream. Yeah, yeah, Randy, R-A-N-D-I. I was looking forward to meeting her. So anyway, so she's speaking at the same event. The reason I'm saying all that is Whitney. Whitney Bond is part of that Ad Thrive Network, and I'm teaching them a 30-day workshop previous, prior to the event. It's a very clever way. I've never seen an event done like this, where they're actually teaching the, uh, there's a specific group of um, uh, leaders that want to know more about Facebook. So I, I'm using Whitney here as an example, but again, coming back to this um, television show, she has her like shows, quick and tasty recipe videos, 29 minute meals, and her videos are just gorgeous. They're equally as good as, uh, you know, like the BuzzFeed Tasty. This one has a little music you can barely hear at my laptop, but. But there, she's a professional food photographer, and she also uh, does her recipes. So Whitney Bond, so she's another great, great one that's lining up to get her show on uh, watch. And uh, one other in the series is uh, Nancy, Nancy Ladybug Reese. She's adorable. Um, she's like in her mid 60s, and she's like, oh my God, my sons never thought I would be successful with this. And she's so cute because she's like, she teaches people how to make, you know, she's like Martha Stewart. And she does these wreaths, and she has like, look at this one video with 215,000 views cottage designer wreath and she has a, a, a YouTube channel with about 4 million aggregate views on her YouTube channel. Now then, there's a reason that I'm highlighting Nancy in this section, that um, Facebook recently, recently contacted her, the Facebook creator department, and uh, she's under total NDA, cannot say what they're up to, she's dying to tell me, and bless her heart, she hasn't as much as I've tried to ask her, <laughs> no, I wouldn't have her break her NDA, but she's, she's confided me in just a little bit, and um, what Facebook has, saw, has seen on her Facebook lives is extraordinary interaction between her community members, 
and they're trying to figure out what is it that she does that actually uh, creates that. And so they're creating a new product. She can't tell me what it is, but there's a product that's coming out that is something. We can take some guesses. I can, you know, eager to know. But something about helping, because that's that whole meaningful social interaction, how to get people talking to each other, not necessarily person to page, but person to person inside of your live and dialoguing with each other and sharing ideas and riffing off of each other. Um, so as soon as that's available, I'll let you all know, obviously, if I find out first, but um, I'm sure she's going to tell me as soon as she's not under NDA. But I thought it was really fascinating. It, 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 it's not like she has a bazillion fans. It's just a very modest page and, you know, and a, a, a modest kind of business. But obviously, um, I think what also happened is that Facebook, when there was that demonetization happened on YouTube, many of you are aware of that, they suddenly took away the monetization of certain channels if you were not making a, if you didn't have a certain number of video views, they took away, even if you were making money on your ad share, your um, uh, Google ads before, um, someone might know more about it than I, but anyway, I truly saw what Facebook did is that they saw an opportunity to reach out to some YouTubers <laughs> like Nancy and who are also on Facebook and to, you know, help them to do, do some other other things to improve the product. So it'll be interesting to see what they're doing. Let's switch gears a bit here and we'll talk about Facebook ads. Sheryl Sandberg said uh, in one of the earnings calls last year that all ads must drive business. Drive business. So I, I actually have been told directly from the Facebook ads department to not, not bother buying fans. Don't advertise to get more likes. You need to advertise to drive business, whether that's getting leads or getting sales. And then she talked about what she called metrics, proxy metrics, proxy metrics versus results uh, or versus sales or leads. She literally said, you see an ad and go buy a Starbucks. You see an ad and you go buy a truck. Now, nobody's going to just go out and buy a truck off an ad. It's more of a, a long-term customer journey, of course. Um, Starbucks may be more like an impulse purchase. But it was really fascinating to hear her say this. She called them proxy metrics. Proxy metrics literally are reach, comments, likes, video views, lift and ad recall, anything that isn't actual a lead or a sale is what she called proxy metrics. However, that's not to, to make them less important. They're a part of the picture, but we can't just go, wow, well, this ad got, you know, 20 comments. So this, I advertise and, you know, got this amount of reach. Okay, that's great. And then you obviously have to tie it to how did it actually uh, convert to, to real dollars. So um, this is interesting to see what they're up to. They really, really want people to win more with Facebook and with their ads. And there was that interesting, there was a conference just the other uh, week, uh, Recode, and they had, I'm forgetting the lady's name, but she heads up the news partnerships. And she basically came out boldly and said to the publishers, this is more for media publishers, if you don't like Facebook, <laughs> leave and so i just feel like facebook's getting a little more kind of serious around like the ads or like look your ads need to perform we'll help you or get the help you need and uh, so so you know just building that that whole um relationship with the customers let's talk about um messenger in this section grab more water um doing good on the stream yeah. do we want to do any q a or we'll wait Uh, we need to finish. Yeah. I'm going to finish my slides because we've, we've got a break for brunch in about 15 minutes. Good. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to finish my slides and then we'll, then we'll connect with the peeps and the, and the CUNY. We might be about 20 more minutes. If you absolutely have to use the loo, then don't, don't, don't mind us. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there past the doodad. Um, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> okay. So it's a really important slide. Messenger, Messenger bots, automated. 1.3 billion active users of Messenger, massively huge open rate. I talked earlier about open rates. Open rates on emails are so low. They're like 17% if you're lucky, 20%, 25% if you're like doing something amazing. Uh, but on Messenger, it's like 60, 70% open rate, 90% open rate some people even get, and then also um, uh, responses and whatnot. However, I had to put this line in here. Unfortunately, marketers, might ruin Messenger. <laughs> now, I don't mean ruin it. I, I was saying this in one of my other talks, that, w that when the marketers move in, the members move out. And, and we're all members as well as marketers. We are all users first, and we go to our phone. And like right now, um, does anyone know, do you, Lisa, do you have ads in Messenger outside the U.S.? Are ads in Messenger all over? Yeah. 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 
So, so, so they just recently started ruling out ads right inside of Messenger. And I find them very disruptive, interruptive. They're out of context. It feels weird. It's like, hey, what are you doing right and taking up this half of my inbox? And so as marketers, as advertisers, again, I think it's so important to uh, craft for the right context. Like if you're a super savvy marketer, I have not done a Messenger uh, home screen ad yet, but I just think it'd be so fun to do something really cool like going, Psst, I know I'm in your inbox right now. And Molly, didn't you do something fun like that? It's still working really well. It's a, they sell clothes, they do Lularoe. And it's yeah. the guy who is the husband of the team and really out, like out there and really fun. And he did a photo of him with a bunch of leggings behind him. Like, ah, I still have your messenger. And you can give me out by clicking a button below and we'll send you a pair of leggings for free. That's brilliant. OK, I've got to repeat that for the live because you probably didn't hear. So uh, Molly uh, Mahoney, uh, that, yeah. yeah. I'm like, did I just say her name wrong? No, I was like, so many Mollies. No, no, there's only two Mollies. I love you too. So Molly Mahoney, she's, she's amazing. She is also a Facebook Live and a bot specialist, and she's also a professional singer, and she's just amazing. She's in my inner circle too. And so the repeat for the live stream. So she, Molly, and I, I'm glad I just remembered that. So the example was, so some of you might be familiar with direct sales. I work with a lot of direct sales companies too. Uh, LuLaRoe, so they sell leggings and clothes. I've seen them do like live auctions, and they're so yeah, well done. I think I've seen them. Kim and who? Bro. Bro, Kim and bro. <laughs> husband and wife team. I've seen them do their thing. And, and just to my point, uh, what Molly was saying, repeating for the screen here, that there was the, the bro took a picture of himself and he was kind of like this and he had leggings behind him. And he was going, ah, I'm stuck in your inbox. You can get me out by clicking the link or something like that, right? <laughs> we'll send you free leggings. See, that's, that's clever. Because that would make me laugh and just go, ah, oh, you, you just called it, right? You just called it. Oh, I just have to click on that just for the heck of it, you know? So um, but I think what happens is marketers get lazy. We do. We want to be fast. I shouldn't say lazy, but we get efficient. <laughs> but inside of the ads manager, and you have that placement, and it always defaults to placements. It will have all the placements. It takes more efforts to go edit placement and to go in there and go, well, I'll do this ad set for Instagram and I'll change the wording a bit and then I'll do this ad set for Messenger and I'll change it a bit and I'll, you know what I mean? It just takes more effort to do that, but you might dramatically improve your results, especially while Messenger ads are still new. So that's what I'm talking about. It needs to be conversational commerce. It's about how you make people feel. It's about letting human beings know that they're valuable to you, that they're important to you, that they're not just a number, they're not just a lead, they're not just a click, they're not just a conversion, that you really genuinely and passionately care about your audience and about their well-being and about how you can help them. You can, you know, obviously get, get to more um, uh, aggressive or assertive with your marketing uh, once you've built a relationship with them. This was a great quote from the CEO of Drift. I think Drift is a... Uh, email company? Yeah. Um, and, and he was a speaker at the Traffic Conversion, and this is a powerful quote that he said, a sale isn't made until a conversation is started. Marketers need to focus on creating conversations, not leads. Conversations create revenue. And so this is a beautiful illustration of what I'm talking about with this conversational commerce, being inside of their messenger, partial automation. You don't want to do full automation and then it's frustrating because you ever seen, I've seen people do that with my bot. Are you there? Are you really there? I need help right now. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's one in the morning. <laughs> but you know, so one of my favorite things you can do in a bot is called um, talk to a human. You can just go talk to a human. And then, and then you can program in another thing. We'll say, great, these are our business hours, or we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or you could even have them go fill out a form. Here's our phone, you know, put your phone number in here, we'll call you, or here's schedule a call with us, or something like that. The quote that I'm most famous for, uh, for about 10 years I've been saying this, content is king, but engagement is queen, and she rules the house. And so finally, Mark Zuckerberg got, got to word of it. And that's why he says, meaningful social interaction. Oh, maybe Mari's onto something. <laughs> 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 this is the title of my new book. I've got a new book coming out this year. We're working on it. So excited. Content is king, engagement is queen. Yeah, that'll be my new book. I'm very excited. Yes. So speaking of that, so this is actually Facebook doing their big community initiative. Um, uh, and, and, and part of what you can do that, actually, I'm ahead of myself. This slide is about messenger groups. 
You can create, I love this, you can create what are literally called engagement pods, or you can call them whatever you want, chat groups, but you could inside of Messenger, you might have a group of people that you're communicating with inside of Messenger. It could be a dozen, it could be you know half a dozen, it could be not too many, but it's people that have an audience of an overlap with yours who are willing to share your content. This works really well on Facebook. You can use it in other, other I know some people that do it in LinkedIn. So you, hey, you know, I've got a new post out, and you pop that in there in the Messenger chat, and then everybody goes and comments or shares, or, and it just start, it gives it, it gives a little boost to the, to the algorithm. And uh, you can also do peer support, networking, and masterminding in there. So um, I know there's a lot of chatbots, uh, there's a couple of primary ones out there, and I just recently switched. Um, oh, I forgot to change my slide, it still has a, the uh, hashtag from yesterday, but it's okay, it still actually works. Um, so Larry Kim, I think that Larry is one of the most genius and humblest people on the planet. He's a fabulous person, and he founded the company called Wordstream. Wordstream is the largest PPC company. It's hundreds of millions of dollars, started from ground zero about 10 years ago. And uh, you may or may not know this about Larry, but he actually left the company. He left his own company uh, about a year ago to start a new company. Uh, a new chatbot company, and uh, so I'm really excited to team up with Larry, and you can take it for a test drive, you just go to m.me, uh, that takes you, by the way, you, everybody have, if you have a Facebook page, everybody has an m.me, that's your messenger, and you can use your m.me link anywhere, you can put in emails, and business cards, whatever you want, anywhere people click, and if you, you just even type that into a browser, it's going to open up messenger, and it's going to message your page, and so then you can just put, you can put a keyword in there, um, for that one, actually, you can just try, you can put the word chat in, put the word chat, or put the word monkey in, actually, that works too. Monkey or chat, and I think I have, what do I have for this event? I think I have something for FB briefing. Oh, if you put FB, hashtag FB briefing for this event, it'll tell you about this event, so. <laughs> we use that already. Okay, so um, I'm gonna be really investing quite a bit of time and effort and uh, resources into um, teaching people about uh, this company, and uh, you can also go to mari.chat. Uh, well, the company that Larry's just launched. I'm really excited about it. Um, Mari's motto, relationships first, business second. That's the bottom line, my friends, and that's really, you know, that's been my motto for about 15 years. It's actually even on my checks. It's on my checkbook, relationships first. And, uh, and I just, you know, my new relationship marketing book came out a few years ago, and that's really what I like to teach, that no matter what you do, it's always about the people. That, that um, technology is changing like at warp speed, it's crazy making, it's dizzifying how much technology is changing, and yet human beings fundamentally, we haven't changed all that much. We want to know that we belong, we matter, we're important, we want to do business with businesses that value us. That's a big part of what that message is. Briefly on WhatsApp, we've just got a few more uh, slides and we can do some Q&A. And uh, we'll take a break and we'll go for brunch. Uh, what's up WhatsApp? So this was just real quick to illustrate this. When you, if you go to boost a post, and some of you might be seeing this little bubble, get WhatsApp messages, new button available. And then that's what it looks like. That's just a preview uh, of a, a live that I was boosting uh, or promoting. And, it's, uh, and then that, people would recognize the WhatsApp logo down there. So this is brand new. I have not done much, if anything at all, with WhatsApp. I mean, I have a WhatsApp, and I just I communicate. Interestingly enough, these last two international conferences that we just had here in San Diego this week, um, I had numerous people who were interviewing me, want to contact me, want to talk to me about brand ambassadorship and all kinds of things. And the international ones are like, what's this, cell, text, email, messenger? No, WhatsApp. And so, you know, it's really important to at least have your, your WhatsApp ready there and we'll be talking more about this in the coming weeks and months and uh, definitely in my inner circle and and tapping deeper into into whatsapp and how you can really uh, integrate that into your marketing and you can have a business profile on there now um, and then our, our just our kind of like next few slides here are specifically about community so we've talked a lot about video today there's three big areas video the watch the live creator uh messenger looking at bots uh, how to automate, how to do click to message ads, thinking about how to put your ads inside of the home screen of Messenger. And then the third one is groups slash communities. I'm saying communities because uh, my friend Joey here, is, uh, Joey's one of our community members. You know, you know Joey, oh, you're in his group, aren't you? Somebody, I saw somebody tweeted this screenshot and, and, and pointed you out. This is Nancy, Nancy Mirland. You, you know what? Oops. So uh, this, is a, this, is an, this is a duplicatable strategy that Joey does. 
He's an attorney, a very nice attorney. <laughs> and um, he has, this is linked to his page, so it's a big strategy right now, as uh, Facebook made this change about a year ago where you can uh, be an admin, your page can be an admin of your group, so and you can link them, and that's a way that you can get more exposure and visibility for your group and have people connect inside that group. So he has 2,300 fans, and but inside the group he has 7,000 members, almost three, it's more than three times the, the members in this group. Now, what he does, his secret sauce, is he does a live show. He does a weekly live show inside the group, and he brings in guests, non-attorney guests, so not competitors necessarily, but he adds so much value, and then he does like these free calls, these free consults, and he just has consistent lead flow all the time. And then he, I like this strategy here. He's just put a video out. He's another uh, Wave customer. He uses Wave.video. And he's talking about uh, just a fun little video he put out here talking about uh, trademarks. And what he's done is he's made the video, put it on his page, and then shared it into his group to uh, get help to get more you know, visibility and uh, shares and interaction. This is a really great strategy. He's kicking, he's kicking it up on Instagram, too. He's kicking up on Instagram, too. Okay, hey, Joey, we love you. <laughs> Another example I want to introduce you to, Ursula. Ursula, uh, I mentioned I do a lot of work with direct sales, and she's actually the top leader, uh, one of the very, very top leaders in a company called Zingular, and they're a weight loss company. And uh, she has a group. It's a secret group, so you wouldn't even know about it unless you're added. 55,000 people in that group. She built that in short order, like six months. I'm not kidding. She's a powerhouse, this gal. And right now I'm in the middle of leading a 12-week social media best practices for her 250 top leaders in her Zingular uh, group. Uh, we have a separate private group for those 250 leaders, but this group, she calls it her testimony group. It's a really sweet strategy. And so she goes live uh, and does regular lives, and she had like 500 concurrent viewers when she was live. This had 12,000 views uh, inside the secret group. And what I love about what they do is that they never talk about the company. They never mention the company name. They talk a, they talk a bit about the product, maybe. Don't talk about the price, maybe a tiny bit about the business opportunity. The whole purpose of the group is testimonies and everybody's in there raving about how much weight they lost how great they feel how much energy they have how they're sleeping better at night their marriage improved and you know and some of them the business opportunity and i just thought it's a great strategy uh for people to to you know share their experience and you can't help but get caught up in this buzz and they're all talking about what they can eat it's just amazing a lot of bacon believe it or not so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway, she's a, she's a great uh, example of, of someone who's really leading the way and using the tools that Facebook gives us in a really creative and powerful way. Now then, I say that uh, I put Mark Zuckerberg up here, the future is relationships. Indeed, uh, focusing on your community managers, your moderators, your relationship builders, uh, people with great soft skills, learning, deep, learning um, listening, deep listening, compassion, empathy, understanding. It's really important to know that people who are in the front lines, if that's you, then obviously you know yourself, but if you're employing people, maybe VAs, maybe people who are interacting with your, your front facing uh, on your behalf, it's very important to, to just really be focusing on making people feel good and, um, and be, feel like they belong. And not having an agenda, not having an agenda. Like you, I think one of the, the, the greatest things a business can do is actually when they interview a potential customer and say, you know what, it's actually not a fit right now to work together. Or this maybe you want to wait for a couple of weeks or months or something. It's like, whoa, how refreshing is that? Instead of someone that's always trying to close us, right? So anyway, there's relationships and building. And then uh, that's uh, Facebook's well-being initiative. Many of you have seen them doing this uh, whole thing they're doing with the community leadership program. And they've inv they're investing... Um, Millions of dollars, about $50 million, I believe I read on this. And they had, Claudia, you were at the, uh, the Chicago communities. So the first one they had was a community uh, summit, Facebook community summit. The first one was about 300 community leaders and group members were invited to attend this Chicago event. And they just had it again in London. So you know when they're doing an offline event and Zuckerberg himself comes in, I mean, that's a major PR initiative right there. And then they had one in London. and they're, But part of that initiative, they were rolling out new features for groups. And they got the admin, different admin, they got metrics, all kinds of different things like that. So anyway, so this is perfect. We are right on time. I do want to uh, put uh, a special invitation to everybody in the room and online. And we'll do a quick Q&A and some sharing. I've got a couple of folks I've asked to share. Did we ever get that mic working? Yeah. Oh, we did. Oh, cool. Oh. Do you want to do your thing first? 
I'll do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just reminded myself when I, when I when I came out on stage at uh, traffic and conversion, <laughs> I said something about coming from Scotland, and whoever was in the AV in the back was right on the ball and start playing bagpipe music. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd start doing my wee dance. I started doing a wee Scottish dance. That was funny. Anyway, um, <laughs> so my fast Facebook results uh, training, Facebook ad strategy training, I mentioned earlier, I'm about, about to do the next version of it, version 2.0. Really happy, excited to work with more of you. And I'm doing a couple different ways just to, to make the price point uh, super affordable. Um, and uh, uh, I think I just realized, I don't think you have the link. Christopher. Does Chloe, you and or Chloe have, has the link, the signup.mariasmith.com slash fastfb. Yeah, in the, in the comment stream. Thank you. I know it's always better if the link's posted. So uh, what I'm doing is actually level one. So you can just do the on-demand. So that's the 12 modules that we have already, and they're self-study, and you have all the slides, and then you have video training modules. And so that's only $3.95. And then I'm actually going to give you three months in the inner circle. Uh, if for those of you that are already in the circle, you, you already know you have a different arrangement. And then I'm doing level two, which is the video training and 12 weeks of live coaching. So that's so you get double, really. You're going to get the, the videos uh, themselves and then plus uh, that live in the trenches with me. And if you've already been through the FAST program, which is all my inner circle annual members, you know what your arrangement is, and uh, I don't do a recharge for going for doing a re review of the class. You can come on through the class again uh, for no charge. And so, uh, you guys, for the level two, if you want to do that, I'm actually going to give you 12 months uh, at free Inner Circle membership. So, um, yeah, that's quite a deal. That is quite a deal. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, that one is 9.95. And there's a three pay option on there. And then there's a VIP level for actually for $24.95. You can work with myself and my team one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so with that, I'm actually going to have a couple of shares first. Uh, Serena, would you be willing? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to have you come up here so you can be on camera. So this is Serena <laughs> all the way from Australia. Uh, see what we haven't had a chance to Oh, this. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I know, it's a little... Good. That's great. So you can go ahead and introduce yourself. You probably... Oh, can you get that way? Okay, yeah. Wherever you can go. It's Serena, because you were talking to Christopher yesterday, and you'll probably need to stand on my on my on my sticky. Be careful, because your shoes might stick. Would you like me to look at you, Mari, or do I? Sure. You can look at me or the camera, and or or the audience. You have a choice. Hello. Hello, yeah. <laughs> and so, because yeah, uh, Christopher mentioned some of the things you were you were telling him at the show about the difference that it made to have the one on one. You know, Mari. It is really incredible. It's hard for me to often to find the words to say how life-changing Murray and Christopher have actually been for me. And having the opportunity to share with Christopher yesterday was a very <laughs> surreal moment because, because of the inner circle, I had the opportunity in the community, because of Murray, to ask is it worthwhile to go to social media marketing world? Because I was like, well, I'm being strategic, I'm planning for the future, I want to get out and see the world, get out of Australia and see what else there is to offer. And in the group, Mari was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it might be good to go. But the community, the group, the abundance of support and opportunity that came from the group overwhelmed me. And in that moment, I was like, okay, how can I do it? I was planning for 2018. <laughs> yeah. One very beautiful lady in the group said, I'm going as a volunteer. And I was like, okay, great. How do you do that? And in the group, she posted a link for me to be a volunteer. I applied, I got in, and before I knew it, I was there as a speaker concierge. Just hold it a uh, little closer. In 2017. And I was, like Lee was, kind of harassing Mari. <laughs> Are you going to have a group? Is it going to be a gathering? You said there could be a brunch. And she did it. And <laughs> that was my first real full session to sit through because of running around at the event, making sure that social media marketing world was, you know, just, just right. This is perfect for everybody. 
So much has happened for me and I don't have a huge amount of time because I know there's so many other incredible stories to share right now. But I will say, you have changed my life. Mm. You have changed it in every way in that I went from feeling like I had to work really hard like my former corporate life to get the life I wanted to be with my family. <laughs> I have gone from teaching in person local because that's what I thought was best to teaching online from home, being able to take my children to school. Mm. And that is, you know, just awe inspiring. And just, you know, I have clients globally now and I'm actually going to Texas tomorrow. <laughs> this is yeah. <laughs> and with a client. Yeah. yeah. Insane. Insane. That is insane for me to. <sighs> you got really clear on your when you were working directly with Christopher. He, he helped Christopher, you get really clear. Christopher, really you, clear. We talked through. We had this incredible one-on-one. -on -one, thanks to last year being here, we had the VIP option. We talked through my avatar, mm. and the clarity I got. It was not a conventional, I, I thought, a conventional way of thinking of an avatar at all. It's heart-centred. And <coughs> I'm privileged the client I'm going to Texas with, he's my avatar. Mm, he's it. That's awesome. It, well, you did, Christopher. I, I feel like thank you is not enough. Mm. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, Izawi. That was awesome. Thank you, Serena. Um, oh, that's right. I'm thinking, do I have that up there? You can get the link for this by typing fast. If you go to my little messenger, go to your messenger and, and go to, well, go to Mari Smith's page, one with a blue check, and just type in fast. And that'll, that'll send you the link for more details. Great job. Um, Claudia, you want to have us? Quick share. We just got a couple of couple more shares, and we'll. Our food is waiting for us. Yeah. <laughs> get big brunch. This is Claudia. Hi there. So again, with Mari, I met Mari. I had the privilege of actually attending. I think the very first session you did with the business briefings when you were working with Facebook. Yes. Here in yes. San Diego, and I live out in Los Angeles, and I made the the three hour, six hour commute, depending on traffic, <laughs> uh, to make it down here. And was so inspired. I sat right in front. Was so inspired by everything she said. And I was starting out with my business, and I thought, you know what, I can do something different. I became part of the inner circle. And being a part of the inner circle allows me to provide my clients with the opportunity to stay on top of what's happening. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but Mari really is a visionary. Mm. And she is able to look and see, kind of deduce what is happening and what is going on. And to be able to have Mari, because I consider her as part of my team, and I consider myself part of her team. <laughs> so That's to true. have such a powerhouse that we have access to through the inner circle, through the FAST program, hmm. knowing what to stay on top of, knowing what to expect, just gives us that slight edge with the clients and has helped myself with my business, myself with my clients, and so hmm. I am eternally grateful for you, Thank Mari. you. Thank you so much. Well, likewise, give her a hand. Thank you. Thanks, Claudia. That's awesome. Miss Veronica, our e-commerce expert, who lives on a boat, by the way. Not bad, eh? She's loving the life. <laughs> and Veronica was just at the social media world as well. Hi. Thank you, Luria. Yeah, yeah, hold, up, close, hold up, hold up. I live on a boat and I live under... <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good. So, um, I met Mari... Two years ago at an event, you know, one of those things you go click and, oh no, my lord, what did I just do? And I have to go do what? And I have to go where? Anyway, I met Mari, did a great um, introduction to Facebook, Facebook, no, Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. And uh, I joined the, in the group, did the, did the course. And it's amazing. What group can, I've, I haven't been in a group like this before. What group can you be in where the, where the, where the members are so active? to help you with any problem you have. There's no stupid question, right? Mm -hmm. And then, if you say Mari Smith, she will answer as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we have the, um, uh, the Facebook Live mm -hmm. twice a month, yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And Mari's there every time, 
and teach us of everything that's going to happen in Facebook in the future that we can teach our customers, right? And um, I mean, that's invaluable. I mean, how can we prepare our customers for the future in Facebook? <laughs> 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 if it wasn't for Mari, right? So this thank is you. the best group I have ever joined. I promise. Oh, thank you. This is amazing. Thanks for saying, Veronica. Yeah, it's so good to have you absolutely. here. Yes. Thank you. Give her a hand. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. And, and I'm, I'm married to Scotty as well. Scotty, that's right. Your husband's yes. Scotch. And we always Everybody thinks we Scottish. We people. <laughs> and, oh, the loo. and the loo. Loo, yes. Yeah, skip to the loo. Thank you, Veronica. That's awesome. Are you trying to get my attention? Oh, I see you and Tracy back there doing things. You're doing the acrobatic things. <laughs> um, a few questions here. Oh, did I have one more? Go to my business page and then you can uh, message me. Just go to the, uh, actually, I think what I'll do is this. Now that I've done that, we're going to go like this and we're going to go like that. We're going to go like this and we're going to go like that. And we're going to go like this. And I'm going to go like that. Like this. <laughs> Silly belly me. Should have done this before, but that's okay. You know. Oh, wait, I've made myself all squishy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Okay. I'm just going to put it up on the slide right here. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's there you go. On it's on the stream, but I, this is especially for the, the, the room. Sign up.marysmith.com forward slash fast FB. There you go. Thank you, friends. Thanks for asking. Um, who else did I? Uh, Fiona. No, Lisa. No. I, sometimes I always get you two mixed up. I know. You are like soul sisters. I know you are. Yeah, Lisa, would you, yeah, yeah, this is Lisa. Lisa Monks from Chipmunk Media. I thought Chipmunk Media because her last name is Monk. And that's really clever. It's a clever, clever branding. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Stand on the spot, in the spotlight. And I'll stand closer. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I actually first met Mari in 2013, the very first social, social media, media world. Yeah. World. And Lisa Harris, our friend from Australia, actually posted a picture on Instagram this morning reminding us, oh. like a flashback to back then. Oh, There's cool. a photo of us together. Yes. Thought, wow, yeah, it's been such a, such a while. But we really only connected two years ago here in your briefing post yes, social that's media right. marketing uh -huh. world. Yeah. And from that briefing, I was very impressed and I joined the inner circle. Mm. And since that time, it has been such, for me and my business, because I'm a consultant as well as I manage business pages, um, so I do both sides of the, of the coin, and it's been such an invaluable tool to have the resource in that group that is available for your expertise, Mari, but also the community. Mm -hmm. The community is gold. Oh, thank it, you. It yes, seriously yes. is because as much as there, you are the expert, the, the queen of Facebook, there are other experts in, this, in that group for sure. that have been able to help me personally mm -hmm. um, in my business, which I can then help my clients because we, as Claudia said, we're on the cutting edge of what's happening in mm -hmm. that group. Mm -hmm. And with your guidance and with um, the words from everybody else that, that joins in that conversation, we're all right there at the front. Mm. And we can therefore help, or I can help my clients, I can be seen as the expert in my community. I love that. That's and, awesome. And, how, and then I can put what I learn in the group and into effect immediately. Like even yes. with the messenger bots, yep. I've been able to, to help a client and put that into, into action. And they saw amazing results. That's so great. messenger bots, chat yes. messenger bots people, they, it's, it's a fantastic tool. So thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you for the community and mm. the inner circle. It's just been wonderful. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. You're awesome. Good hand. Yay. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, let's, do we want to do just a couple yeah. on the live? So okay, we we're just literally going to do a couple before we, because we're going to end the stream before going to lunch, brunch. Um, do we have a head count? I saw you guys counting. Roughly? Okay, we'll have our many are in the room, 80 something, 85, 90. Uh, so, and the buffet closes at noon, so we have a full hour, and you can go through, and then, what did we decide, what are you giving them the, to hand in, Tracy? How do they know? Well, we have cards, so everybody can see me or Joy, and we'll give you a... So, on your way out, in a moment, when we break and finish the stream, 
<laughs> Tracy or Joy is going to just hand you a card, a playing card, and that's your, that's your brunch ticket. <laughs> And then Christopher's going to read your card. <laughs> and you got a personal reading. Thank you so much. Oh, you are welcome. Oh, thank you, Bella. Yeah, my pleasure. Happy to. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So before we end the stream, I just thought we'd just give a couple more shout-outs to, to anyone who is on the... Absolutely. So uh, a couple of uh, shout outs to your inner circle group on the stream. Yeah. Angelique Ben, Wendy Navarro, Sonia Solvay, oh, uh, Kyrie awesome. Draper, Lenny, I hope yes, I Kyrie, yep, of Kyrie, words. yeah. Um, so a quick question from Bonnie Sayers. Does Facebook keep track of how many people have clicked on see your page first? Any analytics available? What a brilliant question. They track everything. <laughs> They're not revealing that to us, though. Hmm. Wow. Okay, my best educated guess is that a page, is it a page? Probably, or pro probably a page they're talking about, right? Probably. Uh, a page that has like an inordinate number of sea firsts that they would definitely, you know, impact. My, my best guess is that that would impact the algorithmic, natural algorithmic reach for other fans of that page that haven't put it on sea first. Who knows? That's a really good question. They track Anita, everything, though. Anita Wong uh, says, with what you said in mind, this was earlier in the program, do you recommend having two profiles if you want to use Facebook for personal and business separately? No! <laughs> it's against the terms. It's against Facebook's terms to have two profiles. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Is it? Do that again. Do that again. No. Oh, no! <laughs> Did you have on a different camera? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's going to do a boomerang. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so first and foremost, it is against the Facebook's terms, rules to have two profiles. And I know that a lot of us in the industry go ahead and have a secondary profile for checking on customers, you know, or clients, or logging in for different reasons. But I know numerous Facebook users, friends of mine, community members who have erroneously, or just even, I don't know what purpose, or somebody had a profile with one name and then a slightly different name, and then just recently she went to kind of make an edit. Um, this actually, somebody came up to me yesterday and said the same things. I meet people all the time where they have two profiles and they just go to do something. One girl yesterday, she told me she uploaded her ID, but the ID wasn't the same name on the profile, and she lost both profiles. And that's what Facebook will do. They'll, they don't just go, oh, there, there, keep that one, and we'll take this one away. They're going, ah, you broke the rules, we're taking both. So be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Be careful. So the question was, uh, I forget who asked it. Uh, Bonnie? Uh, that was Anita. Anita, Anita. Um, you want to have a personal profile for sure, and then you can have multiple business pages and, of course, groups. We'll do one more question, and then we definitely have to break for our munchies. Speaking of groups, Lisa says, uh, Lisa Monette um, is asking, is it better to create a group out of your page? Because you were talking about oh. linking it, but she's heard pros and cons. Oh, interesting. I wonder what the pros are. I mean, the cons. I, I, I can only really see pros. So the well, questions... Some, uh, just out of what I've heard, some cons are that, that uh, they actually get less reach for some reason. The groups do? So when people yeah. are posting things? Bali, Bali. Thank you. So I've heard Arnie Giske. I should know how to pronounce his last name, but I don't. I'm in front of the camera. Sorry. Where I you can be in the camera. You okay. can turn and talk to the camera. Sure. No. So <laughs> Arnie, Arnie is a really amazing Facebook expert, and he, you know, as with anything, you have to test it. But one of the things that he's noticed when testing this is that your page reach will go down because it tells Facebook uh -huh. that your business page is connected to this group and that your group is for business. And uh, I'm sorry, your group reach, I just said it backwards, sorry. Your group mm -hmm. reach will go down because it tells them that your group is now a business group, which makes it seem like it's not really a community, it's something for business. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to 
it, it depends on where you're wanting to boost your engagement. If you're mm -hmm. wanting to really boost that group engagement, he suggests that you don't have them connected and you use other methods to bring people into the group. But it's all about your own strategy. It is, you're right. Yeah. It's back to that strategy piece. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Katarina. Good to see you. Okay, so with that, how did we get a green comment? Oh, somebody joined. Oh, that's just when somebody comes. a green comment. Look at that, color-coded <laughs> comments. So, to our friends on the stream, uh, you guys want to kind of like wave to the camera or something? We should have, have more people at the camera. Anyone? <laughs> there's like, oh yeah, there's one. Oh, this one, this one, the front one, the front one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I wish you were here. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. It's been an awesome experience and a huge thanks to Luria. Did we get other than Luria's back of her head on the camera? <laughs> Can we stand up here? Luria. Luria's amazing. Luria and I go back at least 10 years. Although we didn't know we knew each other. We shared a stage or something. Yeah. David and I go back a long time. Eight yeah. years or something we figured out. These guys are just true salt of the earth people, and I really appreciate everything you did to come down here and help and support this event. So live streaming pros, definitely check them out. They really are pros, and it's an honor to have them here supporting this event. And a shout out to Christopher and Tracy and Joy on my team here. And uh, we have this room until one, so thank you, Luria. And thank you for doing your masterful um, uh, <laughs> moderating. And it was really, yeah, it's walking your talk. Uh, so we can, we can um, by the way, so we have that room over there. And then we have that room over there as well. So um, to be able to have lunch. We're not fully ended yet, or are we? Did I say goodbye yet? Did, are we ended? Not yet. No, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm ready to fade to black. Oh, we're still fade to black. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many logistics going through my brain. I'm like, well, we have to do this, we have to do that. Uh, OK, so my friends, again, we would love to see you in the Fast Facebook Results program and the Inner Circle. Talk to us on the break. You got questions. Come join the group for this event, and we can answer your questions there about the program. Happy to be of service. Thanks for tuning in today. We love you. Got questions? Let us know how we can help you. Bye for now. Fade into black.